some of the posts will require a slot for the counters some in the t in one end and some in the other end so what I've done is I have put a piece of masking tape around the end the dimension that it gives for the d length of the slot now the ones at the top will be wider than the ones at the bottom and I use the masking tape as a gauge to figure out just exactly how deep to go and then what I do is I'll take and I'll put this on a saw and, and cut those slots I'm using my table saw with the fine blade in here and I'll raise the blade the depth of the slot and I'll use my vernier and I'll figure out the the, the dimension that the length of the slot has to be. In this case I have a vernier that has a section that slides out the same as the, the jaws and I'll use that as my depth gauge to know how deep to bring up that blade. And then I won't run it now because I've already done this and what I'll do is I'll put a, I'll put a gauge on the side here and I'll just slide this into the blade just to get almost the right depth and then when when I'm done I'll take and I'll just slowly drop the the piece in to the full depth of the saw and that'll give me a perfect cut and I can also I can also make a jig that is vertical with a slide bar here and run it straight through here but it's a lot of cutting and I found it was easier just to take very gentle cuts so that I didn't damage the plastic and uh, that gives me a, a, the, the finished depth here at this stage I want to start getting organized with all the components so I'm, I've, I've organized all the eye bars into their sizes and I've made a note as to what panel each set will go on all the way down and each of those will then be placed on the plan that I'll set up uh, next okay now I've taken all the posts and I've laid them in their groups pairs you know one for each side I've again not wanted to damage my original drawing and I photocopied the plan uh, of the, or the elevation of the side of the, the trusses. Now when you do that there is a certain amount of shrinkage but I didn't care about that because it's just really as a reference and I've numbered, I've numbered all the panels all the way through according to the drawings and then I've taken the top cord I first put a glued down a, a, a jig here it's a piece of 12 by 12 and I put a straight edge against it so it's absolutely dead straight then I've put the cord up against it and I put the little spaces bet between the the diagonal bracing glued them down nice and tight put weights on them till they dry and now I will have that as a reference and I'll start building the the lower eye bars along the bottom that can then be uh, eventually tied into the top cord with these posts gives you a, a clearer view of what I've done in organizing the side elevation showing all the trusses with the weights now gone off the blocking and this will be easily removable at any time and then I use the other one for the other side uh, in the same fashion and what this is going to do is ensure that when I assemble all of this this will be straight. You've got to try and keep as many pieces as straight and square as possible so as the assembly comes together it'll start uh, pulling everything nice and square I hope. The instructions indicate in plan form the combinations of eye bars from one end to the other and so what I'll do is I'll take those and I'll lay them on the on the side elevation of the full side drawing I lay them out just like this so that it's more uh, uh, clearly understandable how I pin these together and you can see there is a post in the center 
and then you get the eye bars on each side of it. The ones with the arrows here are the ones that are actually the diagonals. They'll swing up and tie into the top. So this slowly comes together from the bottom up and we'll proceed with that now. I made a copy of the elevation and glued the four pages together so that I had a full elevation of the bridge and I numbered each of these spans according to the various tie bars across of these diagonal ones. They're all numbered in the plan so I could find them very quickly. And you can see that I did that here. Now some of these already have been used up. So what I've done is I've put them in all the various groups and then I numbered them so which ones were the eye bars and which ones were the counter braces. And then what I did is I placed and glued a long strip straight. We're using a straight edge. In this case, I used a, a long steel rule, placed it against as I glued it, so I made sure that's absolutely straight. Because I'm going to use this all as a jig to keep the bridge uh, straight. Now what I did is I put these other blocks between the bays so that at various times I may be wanting to set this in there as I'm working on this assembly. Also, most of my assembly is up against the straight edge and that also gives me a another template to or jig to uh, work with. Now, <clears throat> I've removed the paint as per the wall bottom of each of the legs and this is where this is where the where the beams the joists are going to be placed and glued in these positions here so I need to have unpainted surface to an unpainted surface for the ACC to hold and <clears throat> what I, you start at one end now it's very floppy very fussy assembly and I used the short pins all on this top cord here and you can see these eye bars have to be placed in between the cord and the beam or the column post and pinned through and they're fairly snug and I just continued the assembly as per the instructions in the groups of tie rods, eye bars, and so on, all the way through. These pins are very, very close to the finished dimension. And you want to keep them fairly snug so that as you're assembling this, they don't keep falling off, which sometimes is what happens. Now, even though I've drilled, even though I've drilled all these various um, these various uh, rods, side rods together and the eye bars they won't fit the pins you know uh, no matter how accurate it was so I've used a, a round needle file and I've rotated that in there to to file the inside of of the hole now if I file in the clockwise direction which is where the cutting teeth are it tends to screw in and bind and it can snap if you aren't careful. So all my filing is done in the counterclockwise direction. So I'm not bug I'm not uh, cutting in and grabbing the plastic, and but and that still files. And you'll find that there's a point at which that filing and that diameter is almost dead on to what the pin is. Once you've located that, put a little dab of masking tape around there so you know that that's the limit of each time that you you do this filing. As you assemble all these eye bars, when you get to the middle, you have several 
on each side in this pin and it does build up and it's not, there's not a lot of clearance and you don't want to run out of projection of the pin because on the one side we're going to be put a, putting a nut on there and you need enough room for the nut to be uh, attached to it. So what I'm suggesting is taking the eye bar and after I've cleaned out the the hole for the pin I take a flat file, in this case a little triangle file and there will be a burr around the end of this eye bar that's from the laser cut. I want to remove that burr because it's adding to the thickness but I've also found that by carefully shaving off a little of the the eye bar on both sides to make it slightly thinner than the main part of the shank gives me a little extra leeway on the assembly of the clusters of all of these uh, eye bars and it will allow a little extra uh, projection for the pin.